And now it is time for some fantasy football 2024. We got our guy, D Nasty, back. Dave, well, here we are, man. It's already August. It's August 12th. Uh, fantasy football time is now, my friend. How you been doing? How's your summer? No, that's awesome, man. It's been flying by. I can't believe summer's almost over already. I'm pretty pumped that football's be starting here soon. I am too. I am, man. It's uh in Arizona, it's a hot summer. So we're uh yeah, we're ready for some football, some fall, some nice weather. Um, you know, it's uh I've been coaching a lot of football though. We've uh we, my son's just been busy in baseball and football. You know how that is. Uh oh, yeah. season season's already started for them too. But uh, you know, here we are and it's fancy football time. It's crazy to start thinking about like injuries and stuff. But here we are after week one in preseason, and we already have some injuries, man. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's something you got to take with a grain of salt. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's not too significant this week, but I do want to bring up, uh, a little bit about the injuries here. And, uh, before we get into that, what did you think about the whole, I would say, I would say running backs coming into this year with the, you know, I think from the spring and the summer and the draft, it almost feels like you know, running backs this year aren't really is needed almost in the top rounds as wide receivers are. Has wide receivers kind of taken over, Dave? I, I definitely think so, yes. Uh, a lot of my dynasty leagues when I've been drafting, I, actually Jefferson's been going up there, Chase. Uh, I just did a new dynasty startup this this week, actually. We're drafting. We're in about the 11th or 12th round now. Uh, and actually, Jamar Chase went number one in that, which was I was pretty shocked, actually. Uh, and then Jefferson was right up there as well. So wide receivers are slowly taking over, and C.D. Lamb, too, so. Uh, you are seeing the, the shift now to more wide receiver now, heavy teams, and more people not drafting running backs early. Uh, even a lot of running backs didn't even go until the second or third round in this dynasty league that I just I just drafted in this week. So you are seeing that shift now in a lot of leagues. Yeah, absolutely. I think in the NFL this year, there was no first round running back pick in the uh, draft either, you know, and it's, it's kind of takes something special like B. John Robinson last year, but in uh, Gibbs, obviously was picked as well, but that kind of just perfect segue to injuries here. Gibbs got a little bit injured, Dave. I mean, uh, week one of preseasons here and we already lost some guys, uh, some for the year, you know, um, I believe it was that wide receiver DJ, uh, sorry. Uh, no, Moore. Moore. Yeah. 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 Rondale Moore. I didn't want to say DJ Moore and that's my bears guy, uh, Rondale Moore. Uh, and, uh, he was on the Cardinals for a long time, but then he goes to the Falcons and the, you know, Falcons all hyped up this year and, uh, he tore his ACL, didn't he? He did, yes. He's out for the year now. Uh, he was only going to be the third third wide out there anyways. He's fighting for that third wide out job because Darnell Mooney uh, and, and Drake London are both going to be the starters there. Uh, so he was only going to be the third wide out there. So I don't know how fantasy relevant he would have been, uh, but he, he probably would have still got quite a few lo targets actually this year. But that, that is a big blow for him because uh, he was fighting for that third wide out spot and some targets this year with Atlanta. Uh, with That's Kirk Cousins there too, uh, he, they might have a nice passing game there as well. Yeah, speaking of cousins, we're not even sure when he's gonna be ready. I doubt he's gonna play this whole preseason. You know, he's still, you know, got to be somewhat timid on that ankle. I think uh, he will. I think he will start though. Uh, game game uh, one in the NFL. But some other receivers. You got Josh Downs with an ankle injury. Uh, injury. You got Malik Neighbors who hurt his ankle. And Chiefs wide receiver Marquise Hollywood Brown. Man, a sternoclavicle joint or something. I, I heard. He was pretty injured, but now I'm starting to see he still could possibly come back. In a week He's one, questionable right? for week one still, is what they're saying right now. But yeah, that is a that is a pretty weird injury. I agree, uh, but they're saying uh, questionable for week one. So maybe uh, week one, week two, maybe uh, at the worst. So, but we'll have to we'll have to wait and see on that injury probably. Yeah, and Jameer Gibbs too. Uh, hamstring could be a bad hamstring. It just depends upon what grade it is. They're not really telling us being that it's preseason. They don't have to completely really some of that information, but I doubt you're going to see much of Gibbs this whole preseason for uh, the next two weeks here, in my opinion. So, you know, there you, there you are. Yeah, there you have it, Dave. It's always about injuries and fantasy football, and that's why we always cover them first. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And I'd like to mention, too, some of the people have actually been looking pretty good this first week. If you've been watching some NFL games, a uh, guy I really like, Joe Milton for the New England Patriots. Uh, I know they drafted Derek May there, but or Drake May there, so, but Joe Milton, you just keep an eye on him. I actually, he has a couple more good games. He might be start pushing Drake a little bit for that starting spot. I know that he's a first round pick. That won't happen, but I uh, definitely like him though. If you can get him and put him in some dynasty leagues and put him on your bench, 
All right, Milton, we've got, we'll keep our eye on him too. Yeah, there's uh, all kinds of guys that are that's going to pop up. You know, those late round picks, you remember Achin from last year, you know, uh, he was all of a sudden lightning speed. <laughs> People are like, where did this guy come from? You know, it's like these fourth round running backs that you barely draft in your fantasy league. In dynasty league, you may, maybe will, but sometimes in your fantasy league, you won't draft a guy. And, you know, he just comes out of nowhere. But we're going to talk about that with some of our uh, running back percentage. And I think this is one of the most important podcasts that we do talk about because it's important to find out kind of their percentage of usage. And you can go by um, snaps or you can go by actual percentage of total usage between catches and rushes. That's kind of what, you know, I think. And so we're going to go over and see where we agree. And we're going to start with the NFC North because Dave and I are NFC North fans. And uh, unfortunately, neither of our teams are number one because you still got the Lions up there. So we're starting with the Lions. I know the Packers are creeping in their minds, but you got the Lions here. And uh, I think I have, to be honest with you, Dave, I know Gibbs got banged up, but I kind of have him as the new bell cow. I think he's going to get more passes. I think he's going to get some more rushes this year, too. I think Montgomery's taking the back seat. It's not going to be a big back seat. But I got Jameer Gibbs at 45%. I got David Montgomery at 40%. And then probably Craig Reynolds and Stone, was it Vackey? 15% maybe they're sharing. What do you think about the Lions? I do agree with you on that. Uh, but I still think David Montgomery, they're, they're actually a running team. And in first, second downs, he's definitely still going to be David Montgomery. Uh, I think Gibbs does get some more catches this year. Uh, I, I, I'm actually more pretty even on this one. I think it's 40-40, actually. Uh, actually, no, I'd say... 40, yeah, I'm going to go 40 40 actually still. 40, 40. Okay. Uh, yep. And I think Craig Rangel that picks up the scraps here. Uh, and then I, I don't know about Sian Faki. I don't know Faki. I don't know if he's going to really get much at all. But uh, I think that I think it's going to be pretty evenly distributed among the, the, the running game here. And they have one of the best offenses in the league, too. Actually, they have a top 10 offense. So they're all going to get their touches, too, still. Uh, McGovern is not going to get as many catches, but I think he's going to get still some more rushes than Gibbs does. But Gibbs is going to get more receptions. There's a big difference between the number two guy in a great team and a number two guy in a bad team. You know, your number two guy in a great team, in some cases, might even be an RB1. And we'll, there's a couple exactly. teams that we'll talk about soon about that. Well, let's go to the Packers then, Dave, and I'll let you start this, being the big Packer fan. <laughs> Who's going to be the bell cow for the Green Bay Packers? I think it's going to be Josh Jacobs. They, they like A.G. Dillon. He came in the, hap, the camp really healthy, uh, really fit. This They said that he's been really working on all his quickness and elusiveness. They really like him. I think Jacob still is going to be at least forty, uh, at least fifty to fifty-five percent. Uh, I think Dylan will be get, get at least twenty-five to thirty percent, and I think Marshawn Lloyd picks up the rest of that. Uh, Emmanuel Wilson really did get, look really good actually this past week in the preseason. Uh, he will still be on the team, so maybe five percent for him. Uh, but Marshawn Lloyd is injured right now. He's one of those injuries too, as well. So uh, that injury is is hurting him right now. So if he doesn't get healthy soon, Emmanuel Wilson could actually pass him up. Uh, for carries as well. So, but I do like Jacobs to be the bell cow there. And I think Dylan gets uh, about 20 to 25% of those carries then there. I don't think they're completely given out, tr uh, given that much more to Jacobs over tree trunk legs, AJ Dylan. People love AJ oh, Dylan. They, they are, I think. They really like well, Jacobs. And they, they signed him that big contract and they, they let. Jim well, they're going to use him. I, I, I have 55% Jacobs. I have 35% Dylan. So we're not okay. that far off. Yeah. But hey, and you're the Packer fan. You know, you might be right. You know, you probably, I would trust your opinion more than mine in this. That's they really like Lloyd a lot, actually. If he gets healthy, I think they're going to use him. They, they said he could even pass up AJ Dylan as the number two back, actually, is what they're saying in the media here. Well, Bay, Dylan, so. Dylan better get going. Maybe Dylan's just going to be kind of a short yardage guy, if all you know. That could happen too. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd, I have at 15%, but we'll see about his injuries and all. Going to the Minnesota Vikings. And I guess, you know, I guess you could have just flipped the Bears and the Vikings. Actually, probably I'll, I'll go with the Bears. The Vic the Bears are supposed to have a better year, but we'll see. Um, I have DeAndre Swift at 45% for the Bears. I still think they like Khalil Herbert a lot and Roshan Johnson a lot. I mean, I think this is going to be a true committee, Dave. And to be honest with you, I wrote Swift 45%, Herbert and Johnson each 25% apiece, and then some scraps for garbage time for somebody else. But I wrote this, Mike, just it's hard to draft a bear right now at running back because I just don't know what's going to happen. Um, it, it's a mess. I want to stay away from the situation. No, I agree. I, I'd say 33% for all of them, actually. For, for DeAndre, Herbert, and Johnson, I think all 33%. This is Like you said, I think this is a true committee. I'm still not really sold on Swift. He had a nice year last year, but uh, he is injury prone, and I could see one of those other two backs is starting to get more carries, especially Johnson. He's young. 
Uh, he's only a second year guy. So I can see one of those guys actually becoming the bell cow halfway through the year or maybe winning more carries as the year goes on. Uh, I'm just still not sold on Swift, but you never know that, that Swift could take over that backfield as well. So this is this is really a tough one, though. Like I said, like you said, this is definitely a, a yeah. true committee. I didn't like the pickup for the Bears. I mean, if the if the Lions didn't want him that much, and then the Eagles didn't want him that much, something's wrong with the guy. I don't know. I'm, I'm I won't draft Swift if you can avoid it. Let's move on to the uh, Minnesota Vikings then. The Vikings stole your boy, you know, Aaron know. Jones. And, uh, go. <laughs> what do you think about the percentage here? Uh, they really like Jones. Jones, and I think it will be the bell cow. I'd say at least 40, uh, 55% for him, uh, and then probably 25 to 30% for Chandler. And then uh, actually Chandler probably gets most of those. I think there's some scraps in there for the other two running backs, uh, Kenya and then McBride. I don't think they really get much, though. But I think Jones will be the bell cow there. That's why they signed him. I was actually really, really looking forward to see Jones and Jacobs in the same backfield. That would have been ridiculous. But uh, I was pretty sad to see Aaron Jones go. He was a good running back. so But I, I definitely yeah. could see him being the bell cow there, though. I thought it was strange, too. I almost think that maybe it's because he was still the Rodgers era and they're trying to wipe their hands from the Rodgers era or know. something. I have no idea. 75%. They said, was age. they said it was his age. They wanted to sign Jacobs, who's like three, four years younger. But who knows? I don't know. I don't like Jacobs that much. Uh, Aaron Jones, I think, is better than Jacobs. Uh, Aaron Jones... I have 75%. I think they paid him for a reason and they um, got rid of uh, Madison for a reason. Ty Chandler is going to get 20% and Kenny Nagakwe. I don't even know how to say it. Nagakwe or something. Uh, Wang Wu. <laughs> Such a weird last name. 5% I put. So he's not, yeah, not, not going to get much. I, I definitely do that. I, I would probably even bump up Aaron Jones after we're talking 60 to 65%. I would say uh, I would agree with that. Yeah, he's a true RB1, in my opinion. One yeah, of the few. for sure. Uh, Tim, let's move on to the NFC South. You got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rashad White, 75% I have. I have actually Bucky Irving coming up from uh, the Oregon draft. You know, he was drafted decently. 20% for Bucky. Chase Edmonds and Sean Tucker, I think, get the scraps at 5%. Now, I will say Rashad White had the third most snap percentage behind CMC. And uh, yeah, there's a, a, a – who was the other? It, it was – I can't remember right now. I'll have to look it up. It might have been even ETN that had a ton of uh, snap percentage last year. It was just ridiculous when I looked. It was kind of surprising. Yeah, it was ETN. So we've been still, he was number three. I was actually surprised to see White being used that much. So I actually kept him at 75%, Dave. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I would say 65% for him. I think uh, Chase will get more on the, so he's more of a third down back. So I, I see him still getting a lot of uh, receptions, actually. So I'll go 65 and then 20, 20, and then 15% for Edmonds. I'm going to give him a little bit more than you did, but I know just because I think that Edmonds is a valuable receiver over the backfield, uh, just to give White a break. But White, White will definitely get your receptions for you. In the PPR leagues, he's going to be very valuable back for you. Why don't you go ahead with the Atlanta Falcons? That's my boy, Bijan. I'm saying 75% for him, even though I know Tyler is going to get some carries there too. Uh, 25% for Tyler. I don't see any of the other other two running backs getting much. They have the rookie Chase McLennan that they like, but I don't see him getting much. They they, they really want to work Bijan now this year, so I see him being the workhorse this year for him. I do too. I have 70% for him, only because they might want to be slightly careful, but Tyler Argeo is 20%, and yeah, McLennan and Avery Williams, the other 10%. Saints, I have Alvin Kamara. 65 percent this guy used to get a lot more he's old now jamal williams is creeping there at 30 percent good leader to teams you know jamal williams is a vocal guy he'll get his and then i only have kendry miller and Joe, jordan mims five percent yeah i would agree with that 65 percent say for camara 20 percent for jamal uh and the remaining 15 uh, percent uh to kendra and, and, and kendra and then maybe James Robinson, but James Robinson, he might have to make the team even. So uh, d definitely uh, it's going to be Jamal and mostly yeah. Camaro. The Carolina Panthers, this is a messy one, Dave. What do you have for uh, them? Uh, I'm going Chubb. I'm going 65% until Jonathan's healthy. Uh, Jonathan Brooks might not come back until week two or three, another injury that you have to keep an eye on. Uh, Miles Sanders, I think he's definitely going to be the, the, the second fiddle there. Uh, I'll say 35% for Miles Sanders, and then the scraps will go to the other running backs. But once Jonathan Brooks is healthy, though, uh, this backfield is definitely going to change. Uh, I think 45% for Chubba once Brooks comes back, and then it's going to be like 2020 probably for uh, Miles Sanders and then Brooks, actually. They're going to split those other carries, but Brooks could eventually take over this backfield, though. Miles Sanders was a terrible signing for the Panthers oh, last year. I don't understand what the hell they were thinking. Um, then they go draft Brooks high. 
I do like Brooks, but you know, it, it, he's hurt in the week four, week five. I've heard at the latest, you know, that's not good. Chuba Hubbard. Is he going to lose his position? I don't know. This is like the bears. I want to stay away from Carolina. Yeah, this this is is a, absolutely stay away from for sure. Yeah, exactly. This is one where someone injures a running back week three or four, and they know finally who Carolina's bell cow is going to be. They'll overpay for the guy and he's on a bad team. So that's, what's going to happen in this situation. Uh, San Fran, I mean, seriously, do we even have to go over it? Uh, CMC, baby, all day, every day, 80% plus. Elijah Mitchell, 10%. Isaac Garendo and Jordan Mason, 10%. All, it's, all I say is CMC's just got to stay healthy. I mean, he's the number one yes. pick of every draft. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. I agree with that. And the same percentages as you had for that one, too. 80 for McCaffrey, uh, and then 10 and 10 for Mason and Elijah Mitchell. So I definitely agree with you on that one. McCaffrey is definitely the best running back in the league as long as he's healthy. What do you have for the Rams? Rams is an interesting situation as well. Uh, Rams, they have Kyrie Williams, who's actually I'm gonna I'm gonna go 75% for him. Uh Blake Corum, I'm gonna do 25% for him. Uh, but this backfield could change halfway through the year as well. So they still have Zach Evans there too, and Boston Scott, who I don't think is gonna be relevant there. So it's mostly gonna be Kyron and Blake Corum. But uh if if Kyron gets injured, he's another one that I, I injury risk that I really worry about actually. So but so Blake Corum could be the lead back by midseason if Kyron gets hurt. Kyron Williams actually had a massive high snap percentage. Maybe he was the guy I was thinking of. Uh and you know, you said it. I'm worried for Blake Corum. Blake Corum's a stud. Um, he went to the wrong team in L.A. He should have went with his coach, former coach, Jim Harbaugh, but here we are. And I think he's going to get used a lot. I have Blake Corum as a sleeper in your draft. I think a late-round sleeper could be good for Blake Corum, in my opinion. Very good chance he takes over. CLC Hawks, this is another interesting situation because Kenneth Walker kind of fell out of love last year, Dave. Well, and they have a new coaching staff there now, too. They have a new offensive coordinator and a new head coach. So uh, the the old head coach really liked Kenny Walker, and they drafted him. And, so, and then they drafted Zach in the second round as well. Both are second-round picks. Uh, I was actually reading a story on them today, actually. They're just saying that they really don't know. They said Kenny Walker still should be the lead back there. Uh, but it's going to be very, very close there. So I'm saying 55-45. Uh, Zach had actually end up taking over that backfield halfway through the year as well. So this is a this is iffy situation here too. This is more of a, a timeshare too, but it's not between three backs, just between two. But uh, it's really hard to tell who's going to be the lead back here. But Kenny Walker is right now, at least. I don't know what's going to happen. I I think Zach was good, but I also think Kenny McIntosh is really good, and he. I have him as a not sleeper to draft, but someone you can just keep your eye on because. In Walker slump last year, and the new coaching staff might just be like, "Well, these guys are going to want money." Kenny McIntosh just trying to prove himself. You know, it, running backs are that uh, expendable at times. So, I'd be careful with this one as well. Uh, Arizona Cardinals. Now they're another team that drafted a running back, Dave. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, James Conner. I still have that fifty-five percent. Uh, I'm going to do forty percent for Trey Benson. That this is another one to watch too. Uh, James Conner had a great year last year. He's one of his best seasons actually last year, and they really like running the ball there too. So I think Conner still puts up nice numbers, but if he gets hurt or and he gives Trey Benson his, his time to shine, uh, it could be over for Conner. But we'll see though. It's, if Conner can stay healthy, I still think he's the lead back there. Yeah, Benson was drafted high enough to tell me that he will slide into the two spot for sure. The question yeah. is if he's take over Conner. Conner runs hard. The guy runs with passion. Yeah. And you know, we'll see last year. Absolutely, but I, I will say Benson though is slotted to get carries that's he's someone that you can probably roster so that's my opinion on that uh philadelphia eagles so here we are saquon barkley dave how much are they using him they're using him a lot i i, I have kenneth gamewell in a couple of leagues but i don't think Ken, kenneth gamewell or will shipley is really going to get much i um, mean touches i think they're going to keep barkley try and keep him healthy so i think they still give him uh breaks but they're going to really run him after signing him they're going to definitely use him and then he need him for their run game the run game has struggled the last couple of years uh deandre swift was good for him last year but i think saquon's gonna be even better i think 65 percent uh for barkley i say 25 percent for gainwell and then i think shipley maybe gets some of those extra carries there as well uh, but i think saquon's definitely the workhorse there he is absolutely the work because I've had him at 70%. And Kenneth Gamewall, I just have him respectfully at 25 with Shipley and Lou Nichols getting nothing. But here's the problem with the Eagles, the freaking tush push. It takes away so many touchdowns from those running backs. And I'm very concerned about that. Yes, I still think yeah. Barkley will get, get heavy usage. But in those 
in those leagues that uh, it's a six point touchdown for quarterbacks, you know, it's it's going to be helping Hurts and hurting Barkley a lot more. So I'm concerned for that. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, we have a familiar face back in Dallas, don't we, Dave? Zeke, uh, I don't know this. I didn't know what to think of this backfield. Is Zeke's getting up there in age? Uh, I'm going to go 45 percent for him, 45 percent for Rico, uh, and the remaining. Uh, is- split up between Malik Davis and Royce Freeman. Uh, I don't know if Zeke can really handle a full load at his age. He, he struggled, actually, the year before he left Dallas, too. So he looked good in, with the Patriots the, the last year, but I, I don't know how much gas he has left in the tank for Zeke. So I think Rico could eventually take that over, but I think it's it's kind of a timeshare there between those two. 55% Zeke, 40% Dowdle, Freeman and Davis, 5%. Run away from this, I said. Yes. The Cowboys lost three offensive lineman to free agency last year. I don't know what this is going to look like. And Zeke is getting older. It's it's just not good. It, it, it could be a really messy situation. I know they and love Lamb, Zeke in Dallas. And Lamb might hold out too. And then they got Dak needs a contract too. So it's, it's a big mess in Dallas right now. I don't understand it, man. It's just a total mess in Dallas with CD Lamb and both Dak. Just ugh. this is what happens when you, getting contract troubles. Uh, they, uh, they also have a great pass rusher. They're going to have to pay as well soon. Yeah, so they're going to get paid too. That's right. Uh, New York Giants, Devin Singletary, I have 60%. Eric Gray and Tyrone Tracy, I have 35%. Somehow they're going to split that up. But I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure Devin Singletary is an RB1. I just thought he kind of landed into it with Buffalo. And I never liked him. Never thought he was all that good. Um, I think he's average, but I don't think he's as good as an RB1. Actually, everyone thought that too, but then he took over Damon Pierce's job with the Texans last year. So, and he looked really good actually doing it too. And he had some big games last year. So, uh, I think he is a, he's like a low end running back one, I think. I, I would agree with you on that. Uh, maybe borderline high running back two, but uh, he's definitely going to get the carries there and he's going to put up some numbers for you for fantasy wise. And like you said, I, I think 60% for him. Uh, and then I think the remaining 20% is divvied up between Tracy and Gray. Gray actually might get more of that, I think. I think Gray is more like 20, 25% uh, of that. And then Tra- Tra- Tyrone and Tracy is a little bit less. Tyrone and Tracy is a converted wide receiver, and he's still learning, actually, the running back position. But they really like his athleticism. Eric Gray actually had a really good preseason game uh, last week as well. So Eric Gray might be jumping ahead of Tyrone and Tracy, actually. Dave, there's a reason that the Texans – Signed Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce is still sitting in the doghouse, my friend. Uh, <laughs> the Commanders. What about the Commanders this year? This could be a worse situation. Actually, the Commanders. I like Brian Robinson. Actually, there. Uh, oh, I know. I like both of them. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. This is a tough situation as well, though. Actually, though, too. I like Brian Robinson. I like Eckler. But Eckler's getting up there in age too. I think he's more of a receiving back now. I think Robinson's kind of going to be the number one, uh, the first and second down guy. I think Eckler's going to get some carries, but he's going to still be like the third down back. And they still like Chris Rodriguez actually that had decent their year too there last year. Uh, again, new coaching, uh, new philosophies too. So you never know what they're going to do. Uh, I'm going to go. 45, 45, and 10, because I think Chris Rodriguez still gets some carries there and some, and some, maybe like some third down uh, looks as well. I had the exact numbers, 45, 45, and 10 for Chris Rodriguez, 10%. Pure committee. However, both might be safe RB2s, I said. Yes, I think they, I they both might be safe RB2s. It's very true. Eckler will get the passes, but I also – the problem with Eckler is once he's in, if you're a defense, you'd be stupid to not put a guy on him for sure. You know, it's almost like it almost like it blows the cover now that he's just coming in maybe for passes. It almost makes him his passing game maybe worse. I I was just thinking about that today. I don't know. It's maybe more of a hot take, but I, I am curious to see how that pans out. Uh, Buffalo well, the Bill, funny thing is, too, is if, if you watch last year, you look at last year's stats. Uh, as the year went on, the second half of the year, Brian Robinson actually had quite a few receptions, actually. So – uh, I wouldn't write him off either as being a third down back and maybe staying in on some third downs too because he did last year and he actually looked pretty good catching the ball. So uh, yeah. th- this is a situation definitely to watch. And with the rookie quarterback too, they're going to try and run the ball a lot more, I think, too. So uh, it takes some pressure off of Gene Daniels. What do you got for the Buffalo Bills? Bills, I, I definitely like James Cook. Uh, he's going to be definitely the bell cow there. Uh, he's he's the guy I really like there. Uh, Frank Gore Jr., I got – Cook I got at – 65%. Ray Davis, they, they really like him in camp, actually, right now. Uh, so I'm going to say 35% for him, and then the rest goes to Ty Johnson, the last 5%. Uh, 
and maybe Frank Gore is mixed in there too. I don't even know if Frank Gore is mixed in there though. So I'm not going to put much stock in him, but I think uh, they're really high in Ray Davis though. But I think definitely James Cook is going to be the bell cow there though. Nepotism's big in sports, Dave. If Frank Gore Jr. is just going to be there because of his dad, and I have him as a sleeper. I think he, I, even though he's draft lower than Ray Davis, I think he's going to overtake Ray Davis. I have Frank Gore Jr. as a sleeper. I like um, it. I, I think James Cook will continue to be the bell cow, like you said, but just don't expect Gore to be sitting all year. That guy's over. If he's anything like his dad, that's the kind of guy you want in your football team. Did you ever see the drill? He looks exactly like his dad. He does. He looks Hilarious. identical to his dad. It's freaking splitting, man. Uh, splitting image. Miami Dolphins. So I think I pounded monster in your face enough the last <laughs> five, six years. But the question is, did he lose the starting job? <laughs> I think it's going to be close. Devon is just so athletic and so fast. They're like, He's going to demand more carries, I think. And if he stays healthy, because he was banged up a couple of times last year. So I think just if he can stay healthy, I think he'll eventually take over. Uh, and the, Jaleen Wright actually looked really well. He's one of my sleepers this year, actually. I really like him. Uh, another guy they drafted. And then I don't even know if Jeff Wilson Jr. or Salon Ahmad even make the team this year. So uh, I hate to say, but Master, I think, still is the, is the number one. But I think it's a timeshare, definitely, right now. 45-45. And I think Jaleen Wright, 10%. Yeah, it's so funny. Everyone's ranks a chin bet a higher than um, than Mostert. But the truth is, is that you don't know. And I almost think that McDaniels is a guy that's kind of old school. He, he He's going to favor the older guy a little bit. Um, I think both of these guys could be running back once, believe it or not, even though it's like because Miami puts up them points, man. You well, know, they don't really have a true number one running back either. They always like mix it around and share the carries too. Even but it's a lot safer play. than like the Bears. You know, it's like you know you're you're pretty good with these guys. You know, and so that's why I'm like low end RB ones, high end RB twos, or one of them is going to stick out. But they'll get a true split. You know, Jalen yeah. J- Wright and Jeff Wilson are just going to be used sparingly only for injury, in which both guys have proven to be injury. Which, prone. yeah, that's how it should be. But, and and McDowell's, is, you know, he's going to run the ball too. So, you know, they're going to get their t- touches too. So, yeah, I like, I like, I like what you were saying as well. Yeah. I think Jeff Wilson might hang in over Jalen Wright as a handcuff to one of these guys. So, keep that in mind because this handcuff is going to be worth a lot for how much they're going to be running the ball in Miami. Uh, the Jets. So I hear a lot about Brees Hall being like the RB second running back pick. Do you agree with that? Yes, I took actually I took him, John Robinson, actually in my dynasty league. Uh, my first two running backs picked. I traded up and got Brees Hall, uh, who I th- I think is probably the second best running back out there right now. Uh, but Braylon Allen, I, I'm going to say Brees Hall seventy five percent, and I'm going to say twenty five percent is going to be split up between our our UW guy Braylon Allen and Isaiah Davis. I think those guys uh, overtake Israel. I'm not. I'm going to butcher the name here. Abanika. Uh, he mm-hmm. never really performed last year. Their, their late round draft pick last year at running back. So I, I like Brees Hall a lot here. Actually, to be the workhorse here. It's like it's like Abani Kanda. Yeah, Israel Abani Kanda. I agree with you. Brees Hall seventy percent. Braylon Allen Allen twenty five percent. He had a great game last game. He's yeah, a he he's, he's a big man. He's 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 you know uh, not quite Jonathan Taylor, but you know, he showed us some flashes of Jonathan Taylor. So I think he's gonna be awesome. He's big and strong, yeah. and he's fast. He's faster and, than you think. And both have a great offensive line now. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, Braylon Allen's going to be interesting to watch this. You're partial possible sleeper with Braylon Allen. Um, New England Patriots. Uh, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, I have him at 55%. I have Antonio Gibson at 30%. And I have Hasty and Harris kind of splitting the 15% left. Yeah, I'm pretty close on that too as well. I have 65, 30, and then the, the remaining percentage to – Hasty and Heather Harris. Harris was cut at one time, so I'm not putting too much stock in him or Hasty. So it's definitely going to be those two. But I think Rumad's definitely the lead back there. All right. And I said, I don't like running backs on bad offenses. So not super high on any of these guys. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, this is simple 60, 30, 10. Pacheco, 60. Clyde Edwards, Alaire, 30. And Prince and Keontae Ingram will split the last 10. But I will say Pacheco is a solid running back one. I I agree. And I agree with you on those percentages too. I I had the same percentages for them as well. All right. Good stuff. Let's move on to the chargers. And this is interesting because you have this beat up Baltimore team that kind of moved to the chargers. What a mess. And then you still have some uh, younger guys there. What do you got with the chargers? 
Uh, I don't know what to think, though. Dobbins and Edwards, they, they brought over the running backs coach and the offensive coordinator, actually, too, from Baltimore, and they both played for him, actually, too. So I think Edwards and Dobbins both 45% each, and I think uh, Kamani Vidal actually gets the other 10%. Uh, I think Spiller, gets, Spiller's out? Spiller's out? I don't. I think he might be, actually. He might not even make the team, I don't think. They really are high on Vidal. They really like him a lot. And, and Dobbins and Edwards, you know they're going to be solid. They're both going to get their carries there, too, especially with their old coaches there who like both of them before in Baltimore. Uh, and Dobbins said he's fully healthy now, too, which would be interesting to see how he does this year when he's fully healthy, actually. Well, I, I agree. 35, 35, and 30 I have with the other four. I think it's Jim Harbaugh. You never know what he's going to do. He's going he's to be very hard to predict. Um, probably a situation you want to stay away to see who develops out of this. It's just – one of those late, these guys are going to be picked in the fifth or sixth round and probably yeah. still a little overdrafted. Um, Raiders, there's a new sheriff in town, Zamir White, 60%. And the, they have so much faith in Zamir White. I, I might even bump that up a little bit because they went to trade it, uh, Josh Jacobs, if they didn't. Zamir White is going to be their bell call. I got Alexander Madison at 20% next and Amir Abdullah at 15%. Abdullah looked good in the preseason too. I think, you know, they have some pretty good running backs there in, uh, at the Raiders. Oh, and they got the rookie, too, the, from the later on, sixth round, Dylan Lobb, too, or Loeb. Uh, they really like him as well. So I'm going to go 60-30 uh, and then 10, actually, for Abdul and Lobb. Uh, who, but they could even change a little bit, though, too. But the, the Zemir White actually got a lot of carries last year when Jacobs was hurt. Uh, toward those last four or five games of the year, he was definitely their bell cow. So he's going to get, he's going to be, he's going to look good. I, I like it, the potential for him this year, actually. What do you have for the Broncos? Broncos is kind of a mess as well. Like Javante Williams, you can't figure him out, actually. He was really good that first year, and then he got hurt, and he was never really the same last year. Uh, but he is fully healthy now. So it usually takes two years to come back from those ACL tears. So uh, he could be good this year, actually, I think. I'm only going 50% for Javante, though. I'm going 30 for Jaleel McCollin. And then, uh, Audric esteem, uh, he gets the remaining percentage then as well. But uh, McLaughlin, I really like though. He could actually get more carries than give a higher percentage. What about, what about some Maje P. Ryan? Like he's saying out there too. He's still I know it's a mess. Years. It's a mess. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I don't like as well either. So because Pre Samarje Preen actually last year he was the he was in number two there last year. So yeah, uh, this is really tough to tell because McLaughlin when he was in he would always put up numbers and get bust out big runs. So uh, it's really hard to with this one. So maybe I, I might change it a little bit here. I might go uh, 40, 30, and then 20 between this, uh, Green and the, the rookie. I disagree. I think J Javante gets 60. But everybody else, I just don't know. And um, I, I, I do think they like Audric Estime from Notre Dame. That's where they drafted him from. Um, but it, it's, it's hard to tell. But Javante Williams could have a good year. I think yeah i think so too i like him in the second year coming back from the acl uh and then i think they run him more and they, they try and give him the ball a little bit more this year so especially with the uh the quarterback situation kind of iffy there so we'll he, he's like that. a low-end rb1 still yeah I would agree. I, I, a low-end rb1 still uh baltimore yeah. ravens now look at what baltimore did got the big guy in town what do you got for baltimore oh man derrick henry's a beast uh you got you gotta like him i, I say derrick henry uh 75 for sure uh, and then I said the remaining 25% is going to be split up between Justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell when he's back. Uh, they, they actually have a rookie, too, that really like with Sheena Lee, actually, that, though, too. But I don't think he gets many carries. Uh, I think most of it's going to go to Henry. And then Justice Hill, they really like him. And I think he, he gets the remaining percentage with him and Keaton Mitchell once he's back. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Henry can have an amazing year again. I think it's time. And, um, Perfect place for him, too, to go. They they did trade some offensive linemen though they they always do that they seem to shift it around in Baltimore but Justice Hill is still there but I think they like Keaton Mitchell a little bit more eventually I think Keaton Mitchell might overtake Justice Hill but I still have Hill at twenty five and Mitchell at twenty but I'm just saying I think that could change so no problem here but here's a bad situation because the Cleveland Browns have Nick Chubb still who knows when he's coming back some say October some say three to four weeks still. It's going to be Jerome Ford at first, and then it's going to be Nick Chubb coming in, taking his carries because they still like him. 60%, I say, whoever's going to be starting. And the next guy down, then you got Deontay Foreman there at 
he's going to be hanging out. Yeah, Foreman's going to be also worth a lot more the first four or five weeks, and he's going to lose value. It's a situation just stream if you get some injuries and you know you might be able to pick one of these guys up for a week or two but nothing to really draft dave no i agree drone for while he's starting he's actually gonna be a valuable running back but once chubb comes back because his value is gonna dip way down uh so but definitely he's, his arrow's pointing up right now until chubb comes back uh drone ford can be a, a quality fantasy football a low end running back one for you uh but then well like you said once chubb comes back uh his, his carry is gonna go way down so uh, this is definitely – and then Pierre Strong, actually, too. He looked pretty good last week in preseason. But Deontay Foreman, too, is no slouch. And he, when he started for the teams last year, looked really good. So uh, this is just the iffy situation here. I think 50 to 60% for whoever starts. Uh, and then the rest of those running backs are splitting up the remaining percentages there. Yep. Um, I agree. It's it, it's not like the playoffs are in the first few weeks. <laughs> you, know, say you need your guys at the end. And so, you know, you're not, not sure what's going to happen. So, Steelers, I got Najee Harris down to 50% because Jalen Warren. I put him at 40, but I might be low on him. And I got Cordero Paris and LaMichael Pirine, P- P- 10%. Man, I like Warren more than Harris, to be honest, Dave. I, I do it too. Actually, I, in my dynasty league, I drafted Warren in like the sixth or seventh round. I think he could actually eventually take over. I think I don't think I think they declined his option on Harris's contract actually too. So Warren might be the start of this fifth year. Season. They declined, yeah, yeah. So uh, I like Warren a lot actually. I'm I'm going 45, 45, and then ten percent mm-hmm. to Cordell. Uh, I might change my bad, mm-hmm. bad place for Cordell to go to. I think he'll he'll get some reception. I think, and he might be like with that scat back kind of. But uh, I was lucky to be in the league, man. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Jesus. He had that one good year, I think, with Atlanta. Who the, who the hell has he been sweet talking his whole career, man? I mean, he's been like, he was drafted by the Vikings over 10 years ago, I think, man. It's something like that. He's still, still in the league. league. And there's a running back, for still. God's sake. He's still living off that one good year he had with Atlanta. I guess, man. Jesus. Good good for him, though, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bang, Bengals, I see some problems. Um. I'll let you start with the Bengals, but go ahead. This is a mess too, I think, actually. Uh, I think Zach Moss potentially is going to be the lead back there. I say 40%. Uh, and then I think 30% for Brown and thirty, and probably 20 to 25% for between Williams and Evans. I don't think they get as much, but this is a this is a really iffy backfield. I think Chase Brown could eventually take over that lead back role. Moss is always injured too. He just he scares me. as a guy I'm not going to put too much stock in or draft too much in any, most of my leagues. I think Chase Brown by the end of the year could be the starter. Javon Williams never really took that lead back role or second running back role to mix in. So I don't. I think he's just a role player as well. So it's going to definitely be between Moss and Brown, but I think Brown eventually takes that backfield over. Yeah, dude. Uh, I am worried for Moss. I think Chris Brown or Chase Brown takes it over as well. I think he's the better back and the more trustworthy back. Travion Williams and Chris Evans will be hanging out with about 15%. But I would not draft Zach Moss either. I agree with that. Houston Texans, Joe Mixon. They brought him for a reason, but I still put 60% just being his age. I put Damian Pierce down to 30%. And then Dare Ogumba Wale from Madison and J.J. Taylor will split the other 10%. I think they're going to be playing more special teams, though. But Mixon was brought there for a reason. I think I could be low at 60%. He's an RB1, Dave. Especially on this great team, dude. Oh, yeah. The, the Texans are going to be a great, great football team this year. CJ Stroud in the second year. Uh, I'm going the same thing. Third, I'm going 60 for Mixon, 30 for Pierce. Uh, and then the remaining, I say 10%. Between, and the Jordan Lawler, uh, Jawler, actually, is, is the guy they really like there, too. So uh, I think him and Dare, they, they split up that remaining percentage there as well. Yeah, it would not shock me if Pierce got cut, to be honest with you. It would shock me. We'll see. It, it wouldn't, actually. Yeah. Jaguars, what do you got? Uh, you know, Travis ATN is going to be, be the main guy there. At 25%, or I'm sorry, 75% for him. Uh, mm-hmm. And then 20% for Take. And then I think Dearness Johnson, and then he'll get the remaining percentage there. So, but I think uh, Travis is definitely going to be the workhorse there. I had 70, 30, 70, 15, 15. So I'm not far from you. I think ATN. Uh, he had 12 touchdowns last year, kind of quietly, you know, just yeah. not talked about a lot. But this dude had a ton of value. In my opinion, he had over a thousand yards rushing, barely, but still. Uh, he, yeah, he, with those, too, he had a lot, of, a lot of those touchdowns at the beginning. He kind of tailed off as the year went on. I don't know if what happened with him, but it, he, they didn't really need to get him many touchdowns towards the end of the year. He, he had a lot of those True. touchdowns at the beginning of the year, and they kind of tailed off as the season went on. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, definitely one of my favorite backs, though. He's definitely a top 10 back for me. 
Speaking of my favorite backs, Indianapolis Colts, baby. Jonathan Taylor. I love Jonathan Taylor. It was tough for me to trade him last year, but he was just it's just it's such a weird situation. And I got Mostert in a first round pick or something. So I was pretty happy. Uh 75% for Jonathan Taylor. Trey Sermon, 10%. Tyler Goodson, Evan Hall, 15%. I don't know who's backing this guy up, but I will say that the fact that you're gonna find out makes his vet draft stock better because now you can handcuff him. Nobody's drafting these other guys. I expect a huge year out of him because, you know, you got Anthony Richardson healthy, at least from the start. You hope he stays healthy, but, you know, that should hopefully open it up a little bit for him. Um, I, I think Jonathan Taylor can have a massive year at the Colts, Dave. I agree. I like Jonathan Taylor a lot. I got him in some of my dynasty leagues as well. I really like him a lot. I, I definitely like to have a back that we targeting this year as well. I said 75% for him. Uh, 15% for Trey Sermon and then 10% between Evan and Tyler Goodson. So uh, like you said, you really, you know, I think they, they're, they are saying they like Trey Sermon as the backup there. So he's probably their handcuff that you get there. Uh, I don't know how much Goodson or Hall see. Many, they won't see many carries at all. I don't think, but yeah, definitely. And then they always have a great line for Indianapolis Colts then too. They have, they still have a lot of their good linemen there. So their, their old line is going to be solid as well. And then with Richardson there too, that's only going to help them. If you want to cock block somebody, you can grab a uh, Trey Sermon late in the draft too. And then your JT guys, you'd be like, Hey, can I trade you? <laughs> Cause you, you, you know where Trace that Sermon stock's going to go as soon as JT might get injured. Wow. That would be a, a massive yeah. little, uh, for those deep bench leagues. Think about that. Uh, that's yeah, my, exactly. our league. Our league's a deep bench league. Uh, Titans, Tony Pollard. I got him at 70% for Tony. Um, don't like the Titans too much. <laughs> Taj Taj Spears, 15%, Hassan Haskins, and Julius Chestnut, 15%. Julius Chestnut, it's like he's some uh British, uh running back, you know. It's just kind of a weird name. I <laughs> I know you remember him in college, but uh Pollard's yeah. a solid Pollard's solid. No Derrick Henry, he's definitely no Derrick Henry, but I would stay away from the situation. No, I would too. And, and Tully Pyro, he struggled last year. I think he's gonna be better at, with the Tennessee. Uh, but I'm not going as high as you. I'm only going to go 55%. I think Taj Spears actually gets gets more carries this year, and I think he kind of takes some over some of that backfield. So I'm going 45% for Spears actually, oh, and then wow. the main I go is going to be between Hoskins and Julius Chestnuts. But I don't think they get they don't see that many carries at all. But uh, I think Taj actually is my, one of my sleepers. I really like this year. So he's oh. a, he's a guy I'm getting stock in later in rounds and drafts. Okay, well, he'll be used a lot more than he was last year. But then again, look at who was in front of him last year. So there you yeah. go. Well, let's real quick, Dave. Who is your top five in fantasy football? Uh, like in the, like if you're drafting one through five, how should the draft go? No, are we talking one one point PPR? Uh, just like we do at half point PPR. I think that's the fairest way to do it is a half point. Okay, so if we're doing half point PPR, I think Christian McCaffrey's still my number one. Uh, I do like. I do like Jamar Chase, number two, uh, Justin Jefferson, number three, and then I'm going Bijan and Brees Hall to finish it out at four and five, actually. Wow, you love those running backs. You still get three running backs. <laughs> I'm still going to. I'm, I'm bucking the trend, but uh, I got my receivers up there early, and I think Lamb is probably borderline in that conversation as well. Well, see, I, I, I yeah, see Lambert play. Uh, CMC, number one, uh, that's for sure. And then I have Tyreek Hill, number two. I just think that Dolphins offense is going to have to score a lot of points again. Um, number three is tough, but I decided to go with Jamar Chase. I better get something good out of these Bengals this year because they started bad with Burrow last year, but I still have Chase as the third. Number four, believe it or not, I have Jonathan Taylor. And the really? reason wow. I have – well, he, here's the thing. What like what's so though. good about Saquon? What's so good about Saquon Barkley if he's not getting those tush push touchdowns? Those touchdowns, you know, they're gonna give it to JT close. You know, he's gonna get those goal line hits. They're gonna be tush pushing again. They just did it in the preseason last week against the Steelers. I watched it, so that's not going away. And uh, I and then obviously Brees Hall. I like Brees Hall, and he's probably after Justin Jefferson because I have Justin Jefferson fifth, but Brees Hall could lose some carries to Braylon Allen this year. And who knows how the Jets are going to be with Jaron Rodgers. I expect good things, but it's just, it's still so much change. I'd still like Brees Hall. Don't get me wrong. Number six, but that's how I have it, Dave. So we're not super far off. I just have that no. Jonathan Taylor in there. You know, Where do you got Bajan then? Where do you got Bajan going? I have him right after Brees Hall. No. I don't like the, I, the Kirk Cousins and, you know, he's still coming in a little bit injured. Now they lost their third string wide receiver. Doesn't it feel like, 
the Falcons could get a lot of boxes stacked up against him, even though Kirk Cousins should be able to throw his way out of it. I don't like the coach, Raheem Morris, that much. He was never – yeah, I, I, don't get me wrong. Bijan should be right he's around. A, he's, he's, I'm out. looking at Fancy Pros. Fancy Pros has Bijan 6, and I have Bijan 7. So they have they have a flip. They have Brees Hall 7, Bijan 6. So I'm not far from that. No, I agree. I, I think Bijan is going to get a lot more touches this year. He's gonna get, I think they're going to dump it down to him a lot more, too. But I do, definitely do agree with you on Raheem Morris. I, I never was really sold on him as a head coach. He does like to run the ball a lot, though. I know that. So Robinson will get his carries. Uh, so he, he'll be one of those running backs that are up there like Rashad White last year. He's definitely going to be one of the most used running backs, I think, this year. Uh, and the second year in the league, usually they're your second year, you kind of take off even more the second year. So but we'll see. I, I'm a definitely a big Bijan fan, fan, though, as well. And I like Hall a lot, too. All right, Dave. Well, we're out of time, my man. <laughs> we can go into sleepers next week, but thank you so much for coming back, man. I'm very excited for some fantasy football, dude. Uh, I think next week we'll probably cover uh, some sleepers and some positions. So it's always going to be fun to get into actual positional rankings because everyone does mock drafts. We don't need to do that boring stuff. We're just going to show you where these guys should be ranked in our opinions, Dave. Have a wonderful week. We'll be talking. Sounds good. Looking forward to it.